Good morning, friends. You got gourd, you're hurting hippie. I'm not outside today doing my uh, hippie talks because I just got out of the shower and it's minus six outside. I don't need to get sick again. You might have heard a little cough in the background. That's my little boy. Uh, but he's doing well. He's back at school and working hard and I'm hardly working. I. Uh, Today's video was brought to you. He asked quite a while ago, but it took me a while to get my head together as to decide how to answer him. El Chulo13 has asked to talk about the difference between a percentage of strength when it comes to flower and when it comes to concentrate. And I think I'm going to do one bigger. It, well, I'm going to attack it maybe a little different than I had planned at the beginning. You see, your flower, the percentage given of THC is only an average. When tests are done with, with a uh, group of flowers, a uh, uh, harvest, you take one flower from the main part of the plant, you maybe take a flower from the bottom of the plant but you send it away for testing and they're just going to take a little bit of each one test it and give you the average so when a flower is reporting 22 percent or 25 percent thc or three percent cbd that's from a test and it's going to be average for that plant and it's usually going to carry itself through many harvests because plants usually unless the grower is specifically tweaking a certain area such as THC or maybe the terpenes or maybe the CBD content to bring it out more, it's going to remain the same because phenotypes remain the same. So, but the, the percentage of THC in your flower is not sorry, the percentage of THC in your concentrate is not dependent on the strength of the flower. You don't get a less strong BHO, butane hash oil, from a 12% flower as compared to a 22% flower. You're still going to get a concentrate, as long as the guy knows what he's doing with the butane, of between 65 and 75 percent most bho is around there now some people may argue that range i'm i'm more or less guessing from experience <laughs> guessing from experience and a little bit of lookup uh, as well as answering questions for years about different products that different websites have uh what it what the percentage of your concentrate is dependent upon is one, the, the extraction method, and two, the ability of the person doing said extraction. So truly, what you're going to see is most butane or propane hash oils tend to produce between 65 and 75 percent THC. It's taking the plants and stripping off chemicals, but it's bringing them with it. Propane and butane bring along with it the uh, usually most of the terpenes, uh, some of the fats, usually none of the chlorophyll, none of the plant matter, but your strength is dependent on how well they strip out that THC. And that I haven't known a shatter, a butane shatter, to be much higher than 75%. Hexane hash oil, hexane tends to strip less of the fats, more of the terpenes and more of the THC. So it ends up a little higher percentage up in the 80s. Uh, and then you have CO2 extraction which can get it up into the almost pure 98% stuff like that. So it isn't dependent upon the THC content of the flower. Even my rosin, rosin, rosin takes from it the oils, the THC and the fats and the lipids, 
that will heat at a certain temperature. So again, the strength of your rosin is dependent on the temperature you extract it at, the pressure you use, and the amount you get out. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question correctly, El Chulo, but uh, definitely you just, I think you meant it more for dosing. Like if, if you've got a flower and it's 22% THC, if you have the same thing in, in shatter, it's going to be 75% THC. Is it going to be higher because it's 22% than 12%? Not really. Not really. It just means that the person making it has to use more to get the same amount out that you would have with a stronger flower. So it's more about volume and percentage of volume than it is about the strength of the plant that it came from. Normally, what you, what you see as the profile of the plant is what you'll see as the profile of the shatter. It's just in a much smaller concentrated amount. So when you have a shatter, one gram, and it's 75% THC, that means it's got approximately 750 milligrams. You would then approximate, and you're always approximating. Even with flour, flour's easier to dose. You've got a gram of flour, a one gram bud. It'll have, if it's 22%, it'll have about 220 milligrams of THC in it. You take a piece of it, you've got maybe 40 or 50 milligrams, and that's your dose. You take a piece of shatter, and it might be the same dose. It, you just have to get what I suggest is with each shatter you get, especially if they don't report the THC content, with each shatter, with each concentrate you get, you take a micro dab, you take a small bit, and you sit there and see how it feels. And the nice thing about it is almost any dab you take, you'll feel within five minutes, and you can tell, should I have doubled the size of that or cut it in half? If you start small, you'll probably never need to cut it in half and you just take small amounts and I recommend microdosing anyway I because I'm the guy that doesn't want to get high from my medicine I just want to get better I just want the pain relief and if I take a tenth of a dab yeah and I'm talking a tenth of a dab so a little tiny dab but I take it 10 times in the next two hours instead of one really big one that lasts two hours, I'm getting more of the pain and I'm getting less effect to the brain. I hope that makes sense. And happy Sunday to y'all. And there is an, un an unboxing and unbagging a viewer mail coming up today too. So peace and cheers, love and harmony. Catch you on the flip side. Thanks, El Chulo. Mention below, did I answer it? Did I get close? Do I need to make a few more videos while we hammer this out and learn together? We're learning together. Peace.